right, all right. I say one more time. I say good morning, good evening, good afternoon, good day, wherever you are domiciled. This is Radio Biafra USA 2. My name, Mazi Ike Peters. All right, this morning we have a few announcements to make before we proceed into having our regular conversation that we're going to have this morning. So get yourself ready. First, I want to remind you about uh, 17th and 18th of this month. We are going to Washington, D.C. for a mega rally. This rally is very, very important for those of you, especially on the 18th. The 17th, uh, we are limited to the number of people that can attend. But 18th is free for all. You can come in. We are inviting not just Biafrans and world wishers, but we are also inviting Ududuas, uh, Ambazonians, just come in and join us. All of us in diaspora, we're going to be meeting there to make sure that we tell the world our plight. Because everybody is talking about what is going on right now. And uh, everybody is talking about it. And uh, the world is not keeping quiet anymore. They, we are hearing them left and right and center. As we proceed, there will come more. More information will come more, 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 more. Uh, how would I put it? Uh, more, more concerns will be coming to what we are doing, and they are doing it already. So make sure that you attend. 18th, Washington, D.C. Announcement, announcement, announcement. The IPOB women in USA. Biafrans, friends of Biafra, and lovers of freedom are rolling out a national protest to Washington, D.C. in the United States of America on the 17th and 18th day of June, 2021. To bring awareness of the USA government and lawmakers, the following atrocities being meted out to the Biafrans at home by Nigerian government. The raping and continuous killing of Biafrans by the Nigerian security forces. Continuous abduction of Biafran youths for organ harvesting and sale to China and Europe. For more info, contact the following. Mrs. Bridget Okafor, IPOB Women Leader USA, 215-715-7709. Father Augustine Ademegwa, 917 917- Three zero six nine seven eight six. Mrs. Christiana Chiazoduro. Four four three nine eight three seven four nine three. Mazi Maxwell Dede. Seven nine eight seven two eight eight three two six. Miss Beatrice Okezi. Three four seven five one seven seven nine three four. Father Ben Juan Oneni. Two one five. Nine five four seven one eight one. Madam Adan Nayamu Debu seven one three three eight five two two four zero. Mazi Ben one four five one three six one six one four one two. The need to stop the overall genocide in Nigeria and the urgent need to grant referendum to the agitating ethnic groups in Nigeria, even if the outcome is possible disintegration of Nigeria. Wanda Rosemary Williams, 619-381-8579. Colonel Joe Obona, 443-413-5119. Mazi Joe Nduka, 904-716. 7106 Lady Azuka Charles Wonko 801 928 4629 Mazi Austin Wonko Gallant Tech 210 966 4393 Mazi Michael Mba Original Edo 832 687 5673 Ambassador Anthony Chima Gallant Brother 917-855-3503 All hell be up for us. Mazi Chikwado Ipama 510-807-5440 Mazi Michael Amarakwe aka New York AM 646-236-5246 Mazi Oliver Obi 
USA Eastern Regional Coordinator 410-522-8810 Mazi Ndidi Awonom USA Mountain Regional Coordinator 313-587-3054 Mazi Ndubweze Ejasi, USA Central Regional Coordinator, 214-664-8119. Mazi Babachi Joke Ndubisi, USA Pacific Regional Coordinator, 818-201-8884. Mazi I. Peters, IPOB Gallant Media Representative, plus one, 845-283-9665 Mazi Alozie IPOB Gallant Media Representative Plus one 484-767-0848 Mazi Simon Ewa IPOB Gallant Media Representative Plus one 358-451 884777 All hell Biafra Alright that comes up uh, this weekend uh, It's uh, the 18th Make sure that you attend Please get yourself ready Because uh, it's going to be uh, Once in a lifetime We're going to be able to tell the world What is going on with us Although they know, you know, people are, are, like I said, the international community, they're getting concerned. We're getting information here and there. People are talking about what is going on in, in the zoo because, uh, you know, they expose themselves and the Twitter thing brought them out to the world. The world is now saying, wait a minute, what are you planning? Because there's no right sense, man, nobody in the sense that will go out there and say, oh, you're going to block the access block the people so that people outside will not know what is going on well whether they like it or they don't like it the world is talking the world is speaking the world is opening up the people from here and there they are commenting about what is going on in the zoo and uh, thank god for that many more will come cnn they can block you they can they can shut up but they'll get a time they will right now they are opening up small small you know this is Radio Biafra. Listen. And the death toll of Nigeria's latest gang attack has risen to 88 on Thursday. A gang of cattle thieves attacked seven villages in Nigeria's Kebi state. Now, Kebi state's police spokesman has said that initially 66 bodies were recovered, but 22 more have been found. The attacks come as Nigeria is witnessing a rise in gang violence. For decades, the African country has struggled with communal clashes over resources. But lately, the groups have become more violent and have resorted to looting, killing and kidnapping for ransom. As per the spokesman, dozens of gunmen on motorcycles attacked seven villages in Nigeria's Zanko Wasugu district. Many people fled the region after the attack. These people are still unaccounted for. The police says that the search and rescue operations are on and that the death toll is not conclusive. Security forces have been deployed in the area to ensure no further attacks happen over the weekend. And the bandits are believed to have lodged attacks from one of the neighboring states, Amfara or Niger, where criminal gangs are known to maintain camps. Northwest and central Nigeria are a hub for bandits. These gangs raid villages, harass residents and burn down homes. And since the last few months, they have started kidnapping school children in order to squeeze ransom from the authorities. Since December 2020, more than 730 students have been kidnapped across the region. Data suggests that over $18 million were paid in ransoms to bandits in the last 10 years. It is infamously called Nigeria's kidnapping industry and it has been thriving. So far, the motives of these armed gangs have been financial with no ideological leanings, but latest incidents show that jihadists from the northeast are now infiltrating these groups.
Moving on, the horrific discovery of the remains of 215 indigenous children at a former residential school in Canada prompted outpourings of grief. Joining All right, this is uh, this is one of these are one of the reports that I that uh, just streamed in. We need the international community to understand one thing. That one thing is that when they say the police and the and the army they coming in to protect and arrest, no, they are not arresting anybody. Who are the people perpetuating all this? Is the army and the police? These are remnants of terrorists, Boko Haram, that they released from Nigeria and then infuse them back into the army. So basically, what we are telling the world is that Nigeria has no police; they have no army. These are terrorists. It's very, very established. We are not joking about it. It's not going to stop because the people that are supposed to prevent it are the people causing it. The people that are supposed to prevent any form of crime in that thing you call Nigeria are the ones that are perpetrating the crime. The army and the police, any person out there with a police uniform is a terrorist. Absolutely sure of what we're saying. These are which country ever is like uh, tell Amer America those that uh, were um, uh, Al Qaeda or something like that putting them back into the United States Army or police. That's exactly what's going on there. So when they say the the army and the police, they are no 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 they're not preventing anything. They are the ones that are doing it. The kidnapping is being done by them. The raping of women is being done by them. The children that are dying is the army and the police because these are the terrorists themselves the only difference is that they wear the, 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 they have the, the uniform and the crown on their head this is true we are not making it up the international community can investigate this and they will tell themselves the truth that these people are not trying to prevent or protect the citizens no it's license to kill your army, they formerly they were terrorists attacking the country, and when they arrested them, they released them. They said they called them repentant Boko Haram. They repented. You know, you kill people, you maim the country, you destroy everything, then all of a sudden you are a repentant. You repent, and then they put you not repenting and not just staying in jail. No, they bring them out. Not only bringing them out, they put them back into the same army that they were attacking. In the first place what is happening to nigeria is that the people creating the problem are the people that are that claiming to save the problem to solve the problem the united states the german country the government of the french the government the great britain they are part of it anyway great britain is the, are the main the main the main the main body that is creating this problem they know they know what they are doing i don't know what they are scared of why are they scared? You've seen that you created a country that has lasted 100 years. 100 years of nothingness. 100 years of rubbish. Total rubbish. So what is wrong with you guys? Not waking up to say, you know something? We made a mistake. Boom, boom. You go back to what you were. Then decide on your own if you want to come together as a country. They won't do that. They are afraid of the oil that they are stealing the resources that they are getting for free, that's what is scaring them. Must you always hope on something? Why don't you try something else? The result will always be the same thing because unless you make a change, there can never be any change. Nigeria is not going to be able to change. It's impossible. It will get worse and worse and worse and keep going worse. Send the people back to what they were before you came and try to colonize them. Try to create the boundaries, the official boundaries. We had natural boundaries, for God's sake. That thing you call Nigeria had a natural... Go to Odua land, they have, we have the river, Niger River, Benue, that divided whatever you got. In. Why do you want to create artificial boundaries? You go into families and you divide families, you cut them off into two. One part is in a different state and the other one is in another state. Why are you, at, why are you creating artificial boundaries? It is even forbidden somewhere in the Bible. I don't know. I'm not. A, I'm not a biblical student, but I know that natural boundaries are things you don't want to tamper with. Since you created this monster you call Nigeria, things are falling apart. 
nothing is nothing is working out and you don't want to accept your responsibility the mistake that you made the world is watching and we know that sooner or later everybody will know we are not going to give up IPOB our quest is our freedom that's what we're asking for and nothing you either give us this freedom or you kill all of us we are ready to take our destiny into our hands whether you like it or not that's what we are asking you to give us the freedom and the freedom is what we are asking for we are not asking for anything that 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 is uh, somebody even wrote a book I, I, I went through through uh, my this morning and I saw something that somebody in America at least wrote a book about what is going on so let us listen to this uh, this might be very interesting because uh, they're talking about uh, a book that somebody wrote and uh, had to do with uh, Nigeria if nothing is done and could the country actually implode yes yes it can and it will I'm sorry to say that not Nigeria can implode it will implode what has gotten us to this position is the denial on 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 the leadership is the denial on the elite that too big to fail Nigeria is not too big to fail um, when you have governors crying uh, making open statements pointing accusing fingers at the president that the security situation is bad now they are roping people in traffic it, yes nigeria can and it will unfortunately uh, which time in the in the years that have been involved in this congressman you know that we have Push, I have joined you to many meetings to push for uh, an envoy, an envoy for Nigeria. We produced this book. This is a 310 page book on the, on the silent killings in Nigeria. It is real. It is it's real. There is an urgency for the United States, the British government, the French government, the German government to do something quickly as possible. And I think the best way, uh, including doing the, the visits by Congress people, is for the President of the United States to appoint an envoy as a matter of urgency. What Nigeria is faced with now is existential. It is existential. And if Nigeria implodes, right now, Chad just lost their president. Niger just suffered a coup. Bene is unstable. Cote d'Ivoire is unstable. Mali is unstable. Cameroon demanded... The way it is currently, Nigeria is fighting both a religious war and uh, a tribal war. And the religious war is from the people who want to implode and put in the jihadi, um, you know, faction and way of life, as well as a tribal war where we are seeing the Igbos and the Yorubas and Aosas all saying that they want to separate from Nigeria. I feel like the first things that the first things to be on the agenda should be how do we disintegrate Nigeria? How do we make Nigeria go back to everyone goes back to their own particular space? Looking at the history of Nigeria, you would see that the founding fathers of modern day Nigeria never wanted Nigeria to work, and that was why they put Nigeria the way it is. And we have, um, you, you, we have spoken about how much uh, people migrate to, um, to other parts of the world and develop other parts of the world. Most of the people who do this are the Igbos, the Igbo-speaking tribe of Nigeria. They're the ones who are most concerned about development and progression. But there are some sect of people in Nigeria that are seeking to hold Nigeria down. And you've mentioned them. We all know them, and they're the, they the fullness. They are the ones who are hell bent on making sure that Nigeria becomes South Sudan or becomes Syria or, and just ensure that the caliphate of militants, there will be a hybrid of militants that will be sent all the way from Nigeria to other parts of West Africa to cause even more havoc for Africans. 
So I will say this, and I'm, this is just my suggestion. It doesn't have to be followed. But I will say that right now, all hands should be on deck to see how we can disintegrate Nigeria. How can we ensure that people who are shouting or clamoring for Biafra, people who are clamoring for Odudua, people who are clamoring for whatever they are clamoring for, how can we ensure that they can go back and, you know, um, create their own nations in Nigeria and see how those people can develop, uh, you know, collectively as a group or as a tribe? Because if not, if we continue to say that we want to go in and create a system whereby we help uh, people in power, the, they've already infiltrated. We will only be, you, the Americans will only be giving the secrets to the enemies. And that's the fact. We would only be telling, empowering the enemy for what they already have. What's your reaction to what the DSS has said today? There is a warning uh, against those who are, uh, according to them, planning to disintegrate the country. You said the problem in Nigeria is that people who should know don't want to know and they do not know. The, the security section is talking and talking and talking. What are they doing? The situation in this country today is so bad that I, Robert Clark, I cannot guarantee Nigeria staying another six months. All right, that's true. That's correct. That's very, very correct. And we know that. You know that. Everybody knows that. But you know, what are we doing about it? The British, especially United, United Kingdom, they are the ones that are the problem we have in Nigeria because they created nothing in the first place. And they are the ones that are doing everything in their power to protect it, to make sure that it stays there. They don't care how many people that dies. All this dead thing doesn't mean anything to them, honestly. They pretend as if they put in there, they brought in what they call BBC uh, Igbo. They brought BBC there to tell to help them <laughs> promulgate the, the, the atrocities that they are committing. Because BBC Igbo or BBC whatever they brought into, into our region from the beginning have been a suspect. They didn't bring them at the time. They required them. No, they, they decided, you know something, we're going to go in there so we can destabilize these people. And that's exactly what they have done, but they are not succeeding. They are failing. Because everybody out there is a media person. People are reporting, even though they get they get them killed, you know, when they see them taking pictures and all that, and the rest of them, they're reporting all these things. Their lives are in danger. The BBC, they are, they are free to run in anywhere they want and... And make a very and you know go to the areas where they think it favors them. They are not objective, but we don't. We are not bothered. We have told you Biafra is the thing that we want. Biafra is what we're going to get, regardless of what you do. We are not going to give up. We're not going to stop. You either kill us all or give us Biafra. It's as simple as that. They, they, they can they can pretend all they want as if as if everything is okay. Nothing is okay. Killing is ramping up. It's a rampage. And now, the fact to tell you how how wicked these people are, any killing there, they try to caution it and push it to members of the Biafran community. Southeast was peaceful. And as soon as they found out, they found out that Southeast was peaceful, they created something that will make it look like Southeast uh, uh, is very insecure. No, we know that from the beginning, Southeast was absolutely what we call Biafra land was completely quiet. Then all of a sudden, they started moving their Boko Haram police and the military down to that region. But you know something? While they are pushing them down, their own end is open. They are killing them too. Because Fulani, of their world they want is to take over night. For them, God gave us Nigeria is our country. Well, Fulani, we are, we are assuring you that Nigeria might be your country, but it, didn't, it doesn't include Biafra land. No. You will never, ever, 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 ever take our land. It's not possible. Because our children, we are, we are, we are growing. <laughs> we are teaching them already. Oh, yes. We are teaching them that these people are your enemies. Anywhere you see them, sniff them out. Grow up and know that you are on your... You don't have to hate anyone. But what we are saying is self-protection is not hate. Learn to understand that these people are here to exterminate you. They have done, they, have, they are trying everything in, the, in their power 
to make sure that you don't exist and you have to do everything in your power to make sure that you exist don't open your hands and let them come in because they are snakes the fulani they are snakes they are not coming to live with you they are coming to sniff your life out of you i've spoken about my little book a little pictorial book that i found when i was five six i didn't know it was the fulanese but now as an adult i really know that the book is the, the farmer and the camel the camel was cold and wanted to come into the hut and they, they allowed him to put his leg before you know it the other leg before you know it the head comes in and then the next thing boom he kicks out the farmer that's it, fulani that's their story that is their story the man and the camel go google it and read it up and see what what i'm talking about so these people are snakes snakes you don't bring them in because they will bite you. Trust me, they will. The world can keep quiet and pretend as if they don't know what is going on. Well, when they are killing, the assurance we're giving them is that, you know, the, the, the people they, they, that you gave a name, they call them unknown gunmen. Unknown gunmen, who are they? It's a very simple thing. The logic is very, very simple. These are kids. These are young kids. These are disgruntled people that they have killed their families. And they go say, you know, okay, the best thing I can do in this world is anywhere I see these people in uniform, I'll sniff them out. They are not attacking the police. Those people are criminals. The people they are attacking are, are, are the Boko Haram that they brought back into the army and gave them uniform. So it will continue and God will protect them. God will protect their unknown gunmen. They will continue doing what they are doing until they allow us to go. A child that says that the mother will not sleep, will not sleep, will be awake too. So as long as you are killing our families, raping our mothers and killing our sisters and brothers, unknown gunmen will continue coming after you. You will never. You don't, you, some are saying oh, it's IPOB. No. Some say it's ESN. No. ESN, they are in the bush. They are not in the city. They are in the bush making sure that you full and these don't come in there. And they are not going to stop. There is no way they are going to stop because what we do is every day like we're praying our psalms pray for the unknown gunmen pray that they be guided by chuku kikabiyama because these are angels from heaven that have come to help us do what we are doing last months as assaults on security formations and killings have become widespread in the region particularly in emo state Joining us now to discuss the security situation in the southeast, as well as efforts to restore peace, is a so last Sunday, the headsmen were still killing people. Mm. But, but we cannot deny the fact that these destruction and arson attacks are taking place in the southeast region on security formations, on uh, electoral body, INEC offices, and of course, killing of the... You see, the point is, like, like I was saying before, you see the way they are handling it. See the way they are talking? Security situation in the Southeast. Couple of months ago, we had absolute zero, zero crime, killing. All this killing was not there. So what did they do? They started pushing their Boko Haram down to, this, to the South. But our leader said one thing. Our leader told us they were going to come. They are not taking us by surprise. But the truth is, as they are coming, their back is open. We will kill them in Biafra land. They will all die there. We will bury them in Biafra land. But they will not have a place to go. Because those that, are, that will escape will not even have a place to go back to. Because their land, will be taken, their land will be taken over, which is already what is going on. You know, they, most of them are living in IDP camps. So they eventually will lose. And at the end, Biafra will come. They will kill us. We will kill them. In the end, we are still in our home. They will not have a home to go back to. Because Biafra land is going to be their graveyard. We're going to bury all of them there. That is correct. We're going to burn, burn the bodies and just take them off our land because they are, they are very impure. All right, let's, so let's listen to this. The report that is coming in, I, I just got this one this morning. Somebody just sent it to me. Last months, as assaults on security formations and killings have become widespread in the region, particularly in Imo State. Joining us now to discuss the security situation in the southeast, as well as efforts to restore peace, is a prominent Nigerian lawyer and former president of Igbo 
think tank group, Akai Kenga, Godi Uwazirike. It's good to have you with us in the Thank studio. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, let me start this way. Um, some say that to diagnose, to solve a problem, you first have to diagnose it. So perhaps you can help us. Uh, recently, we saw a trending video of cows being set ablaze in Anambra State. So what is, in your opinion, at the heart of the disruption, the insecurity, and the violence that seems to have erupted in the southeast? Well, what we are seeing in the southeast is synchronized violence, synchronized by certain people, definitely not by Igbos. Okay. Those people who are doing that are foreigners. If you see a group of Igbo people moving, from their physiognomy, you will know. Now, one of the things that people did in the southeast was to get close to them, speak Igbo to them, and without exception, they responded in broken English. And you saw the other man speaking on Sunday, being displayed by the police as the only surviving person among those who attended the Bondi prisons again. The man was given an Igbo name. And when he spoke, he had a Northern accent. But back to your question about what is really happening. In the past two years or more, the clamor for a president of Nigeria coming from the southeast has been on. And if you notice, up to the past three months, there was no problem in the southeast. Four months. What happened? Suddenly, if you read some papers published in Abuja, you see Igbos are killing northerners. You call those in the south, they say, what are you talking about? It has nothing to do with any Igbo man or any northerner. What we are witnessing is a programmed action by some people to destabilize the Southeast, indeed the whole of Igbo land, with a message, Igbo land is unstable. If you are unstable, how then can you produce a president? That is the real key in issue. The headsmen have always been there. But if you notice, for the past three or four months, each of the headsmen had died out, except in a Boeing state. We are up to last Sunday. The headsmen were still killing people. Mm. But, but we cannot deny the fact that these destruction and arson attacks are taking place in the southeast region on security formations, on uh, electoral body INEC offices, and of course killing of the uh, security officials themselves. So the question is, how does this make a, a call or a point for or an argument for inclusion? If you say marginalization... And let us listen to these idiots when they talk. They're killing police, they're killing the army. These are terrorists. INEC office. Who brought the present governor of Imo State to office? It's INEC. They are the ones that conduct the election. I know they might not be the ones that brought him directly, but at least they are there. They could have taken the Supreme Court or whatever. Take them to court. Just, just they, they have no right to do what they did. So, this is a cumulative. Cumulative thing is not, is not that anybody wants to kill anybody. No. The people, the police, the so-called police and the army you're talking about, these are terrorists and we know. These are people abducting children, abducting women and raping them. So when they go after them, there's nothing wrong with what they're doing, what, what these young people are doing. Like I said, and I'm saying it again, um, um, uh, the gunmen, the unknown gunmen, they are doing what they are supposed to do and they are doing it excellently well. They should keep taking these people out. There's no way. Don't give them a chance. Don't give them a breathing space. You know, you know when they talk, one thing about uh, people that they call to interview, to answer questions and things like that, I don't know why they cannot hit the nail on the head. They keep running around. You know, it's like a small boy who have finished eating, rather than take the meat, is licking the soup around the meat and leaving the meat there, only to be asked to take it. You are the ones that are creating this problem. Say it the way it is. You, where they are killing you, regardless of what you say, though. So what is the point? <laughs> better keep quiet. You keep quiet, you'll die. You'll talk, you'll die. Better talk and die. That's the way I look at the whole thing. Let's continue with this before I, I put it on. And inequity has been, you know, the reason for this clamor. Some would say for the clamor of cessation. How do these 
as an attacks on killings and destruction make, make a point for inclusion? And who stands to benefit from these attacks? Why have they not gone? Uh, why, why do they continue to recur? In your well, opinion? First correction mm -hmm. is this. Who is doing the destruction? Exactly. Who is attacking police formations? Who is attacking the INEC? If you notice the targets, election conducting body, security body. Mm -hmm. In the first place, Ibos are not destroyers. Sibos are builders. Since the end of the war, the federal government has not been building police stations mm -hmm. in the Ibo land. Every structure you see there, apart from the old prison in Silo, which was built in the 1950s, is the result of the contribution of... I'll give you an example. I come from a human but no local government of Himo State. Recently, the police division of quarters was destroyed, I think, two or three weeks ago. What most people don't know is that building was built by the community, also community, and donated to the police last December. So why will the people who built turn around to destroy? For what purpose? The average Iboma knows that those who are doing the destroying are not Ibos. The special squad of security men sent by federal government are also not Ibos. Okay. So it's a case of the policeman will come shoot into the air, stray bullet to land on people. And then the unknown government will move around in brand new Hilux trucks. Shoot into the air, we face is covered. Once in a while, people will get close and do like this, and then they take a closer look at them. So if you say the Igbos are not destroying, who then is carrying out these attacks? The unknown government. It is not by accident that they call them unknown government. That's why I said, if you go to Alaba today, you know there's an Igbo section. If you see there, from the official norm, you say these are Igbos. If you turn towards the right, you see Alaba and Ago. That's where the house is. The house trailers are. You also see the official norm. If I go to Jankara Market here in Lagos, you don't need to be told these are Europas. So if the unknown government cover their faces, once in a while, people go, they speak Igbo to them. Sing in Igbo, they would even respond. This is quite a strong... It is a, a revelation. Yeah. But the biggest problem they have now in Igbo land is that if they see somebody of my age, they will go after me. Police will arrest me and call me a financier. If they see my son, they will grab him and say he's an activist. Send him to the police station, military barracks or anywhere. You have to run around to get him out. And you know what it means to Nigeria for someone to run around. I don't mean real race. Mm -hmm. You have to do something. Otherwise, you see him on TV the next day confessing to things he did not do. Because when they torture you, you have no option. And remember, Archbishop Obina, the Archbishop of the Catholic Diocese, last Sunday came out almost weeping that the morgue where they keep dead bodies, that, that place is overflowing, 35 unidentified bodies. The Nigerian Bar Association came out and said, we have set up a unit to liaise with the police commission. That's how they have been able to rescue some people, including the man who came from Bayelsa, who was going to buy a, a casket for his father-in-law's burial. The one was grabbed and displayed on TV as a high-ranking chief. I need me to just interject, because you're making strong assertions, and we wonder why this hasn't come to light in a more public forum. But let me just ask, the, the, what we do know, though, is that there was a... I'm glad you said you're from Imo State. Yes. There was a sit-at-home order, and it would seem that largely it was obeyed. So that would then beg the question, who is in charge? You know, uh, we want to bring up the issue of IPOP because they've made certain assertions. And then we want to ask the question in, in, as well regarding Imo State. Um, it's hard to put this. There have been assertions by people in, in Imo State that since the current governor came into being, that Imo State hasn't known peace. So suggesting that his coming in as governor has also triggered some of this uh, violent attacks. What, what's your well, take on let that? Let me take it one by one. Issue of sit at home to observe a day for our departed brothers, those who died during the war, has been on since 1970. So it depends on the government of the, to make it a focal point. No, I'm talking about how it was enforced. There was intimidation behind No, 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 there was no intimidation. Listen, what you saw was what we call a charade. Some people wear black and red. 
and be moving around. He must say, you think that Igbos are not Igbos. That's the point I was making. The unknown God men are not Igbos. As for day of mourning, it's observed every year. You have seen the one of Tati. September 9th, some people will also observe their own. They don't make noise about it. The Jews call their own Yom Kippur. We call our own mourning our dead. Two, IPOB is what I will call a phenomenon that has risen because of injustice, because of lack of fair playing ground, because of arrant discrimination. Now, nature abhors vacuum. So whenever there is this kind of lack of inclusiveness, grumbling will come in. All it takes is somebody to harvest that they are grumbling and say, this man is doing something bad. Let's see what I can do. Believe in me, the average person will join. Mm. On the issue of the governor, yeah, but I leave it at that. Is the governor in charge of uh, any security force there? No. If he says something negative, they'll go against him. You know where he lives in Norway? It's called a fortress. On one side is army chief's house, police chief, DSS Air Force. All of them live in a circle. And the police headquarters and the prisons that were just burned down, it just opposite them. Okay. CCTV showed all those who do the attacking. Do you know that till today, none of these groups I mentioned ever produced that CCTV? Uh, I, and I mean, a lot of people watch will be wondering why is nobody being brought to book? Uh, where are the perpetrators? But in the absence of state police, we've seen vigilantes across the country, states having to uh, form their own vigilantes, and uh, as well as uh, regional security. Same as the South is with Abu Bay Agu. Um, they don't seem to be making much headway. What have the governors got wrong when, uh, uh, when it comes to security? of their states and of course the region, Southeast in particular now? Well, I don't want to call it intimidation from Abuja. I also don't want to call it timidity of the governors, no. Let me say it's a case of three political parties having governors in the Southeast. Three political for uh, PDP has two, that's Enugu and Abia. Enugu has always had a Mubago. They have a name for their own and they have bosses for them. Abia State, yes, his own is not as elaborate as that of Enugu. Imo State also passed a law a long time ago, outlawing open grazing, mm -hmm. and they also passed a law establishing a bargo. But then the governor said he has sent some people to train the military barracks in Anambra State, so that when they come, they form the nucleus. Now, the man in Anambra also has his own. His own method is different. Because there are three parties, they have different methods. Abga said, okay, if you kill a cow, you pay. If you kill a human being, you pay. And they're enforcing it. Mm -hmm. So when they're talking of a bargain to them, they may say, we have something different. The man in Ebo, you know, he has just joined APC. Mm -hmm. And he's also the chairman, so he's being drawn on one side. Unfortunately, his state is the worst hit by the killer hesmen up till this Sunday. We are still killing. Now, the governors are also, well, I think they're handicapped. But remember this, there are killings all over the country, in all the zones. And in terms of number, in terms of statistics. All right, let's stop this. Because uh, why I want to stop this right here is because, uh, like I told you, when they want to talk, they will never tell the truth. They know the truth, but they're hiding the truth. And how can you get a result when you're not telling the truth? It's unfortunate. If you ask about the governor, what is he doing wrong? The governor is not doing anything wrong. He's just that he's not a governor. He was a, he was nominated and put in there. The people did not vote him in. Come on, guys. Tell us, just say it the way it is. Nothing will happen to you. When you go and take somebody who is number four in an election and make him and put him there as governor, you think the people are stupid? They frustrate him. They will make sure that he's not a governor. He's, an, he's a nominated. He's, like, he's not elected by anybody. The Supreme Court brought him there. The Fulani Janja, with they just sat down around in court and said, you know what? We're going to put this man there and let us see what they are going to do. The man will never find peace. Who's of them is wasting his time. He can never, never sleep 
Because he has violated the law of nature. You can't do what you are doing and think you can get away with it. So this question of uh, disgruntled, this are not totally quasi. They asked you why is he having a problem? Just simple answer. He was not elected by the people. The answer is so straightforward. Stop being politically, like I said, if you don't want to come to TV to say something, get prepared. You have to really talk. Don't go there and eat there, man, because it's not going to work. Also, Dimba or also Dimba, whatever they call him, was not nominated. He was not elected by the people. They just picked him and picked him and put him there. Kuro Kuro Eye in the broad daylight. They fabricated and then there are people there, you know, where you think they are stupid. They can be singing. Some of them, you know, can go there and say, oh, are you so we are supporting the governor. Yeah, right. <clears throat> when the come comes to become, you know that they don't even support him. They are not stupid. Nobody is foolish. The man is a worthless, useless, and nobody nominated him. He's going to have problem and keep having problem. There is no way out. Some people are beginning to speak out now. Some of the governors, ex-governors, are talking and uh, they are speaking up. You know, few of them are speaking up, but there's no, there's no hope for anyone. All we want is Biafra, and Biafra is what we are going to get. Regardless of what you say, regardless of whether you support Namdi Kano and us and whatever we are doing, we know what we want and we are going to get it. You are not going to give us Biafra or you, you will all die looking for Biafra. There is nothing anybody can do about it, honestly. Enough Let's listen to this. of senseless killings of Igbos in the southeast. We call this press briefing to draw the attention of His Excellency, President and Commander in Chief of the Armed Forces, Chief uh, Mohammed Buhari. <laughs> you see the point is that the man I'm going to is well, well, Chief Chief Mohammed Buhari. Do you see the point I'm trying to make is that this is exactly what I'm saying. These people, is, the man sitting down here now, this is, I think is he face his name. Yes. He knows that Buhari is not alive. He knows that the man there is not Buhari. That's why he's so reluctant to call his name. Oh, Buhari, a chief. And this is the first time I'm hearing that Buhari, but Buhari is a chief. Anyway, let's keep listening. This is very interesting. And the international community on the unprecedented bloodletting carnage and senseless killing of the Igbo, especially the youths in Southeast, by the security agencies, an appeal for urgent intervention. For the for a point of correction, these are not these are not, I repeat, these are not security agencies. These are Boko Haram that is wearing the military uniform and the police. He's not going to stop. Who are you talking to? They are posted there. The cabal, they posted them there to eliminate our youths. And they are doing very well doing that. So when he says security agencies, the world is listening to you, sir. The entire universe, the entire world is listening. Tell them what they are. These are people, these are book, ex Boko Haram convict bandits. They use the word bandit, but bandits is a blessing, it's a Christmas name. It's like a very good name for them. These are murderers. These are people that have maimed the people that did. They put them back and give them uniform. None of them. Go close to them. They, they, on their badge, you see a Biafran name on their badge, but go speak any of the Biafran languages to them. Some of them don't even speak English. These are Fulanese that they brought across the Sahel to come in and destroy our people. Let's keep listening to Ezefe. For the sake of peace and stability of the country, we endorse the statement made by the president of Ohanes and Digo, 
the current militarization and widespread carnage in the southeast have precipitated unprecedented fear, tension, and untold hardship on the people in the zone, thereby aggravating the security challenges in the land. We condemn without any reservation the destruction of public property in the Southeast because it is not in our character to indulge in arson, brigandage. We believe, however, that it is not fair and just to use a sledgehammer to kill harmless flies as many victims of this joint security agency's onslaught are hapless and innocent Igbo youths and other citizens who have become victims of circumstances. We know and understand the reason why the youths are angry. The marginalization exclusion humiliation and other negatives and deniers meted out to Nibo make the young ones very angry. And that is the talk all right, I don't think I want to go on with that because uh, this is this is very irritating. It's getting I didn't listen to it before now, but uh, he's trying to like I said before, you either don't say something or you just make sense. If you don't know, if you don't if you are not courageous enough to come to national television to make this kind of pronouncements, forget about it. First of all, you see the way you are nervous. You are, you are not talking to, you are, especially on a video. When people are watching your body language, <laughs> your body language is saying something else and your mouth is saying something else. There's fear in your eye. What are you afraid of? These people are old people like me. So what are you people afraid of? Say it the way it is. These are planned people say security is not in our and it's not in our character to destroy public property. What what property are you destroying? Most of the police stations were built by the community. Oh yes. In my community, I know Clay to see Beto right in front of my house at Newe built one and gave it to the police. These are these are things that many people do, not the federal government that is building it. So what is wrong with destroying it? Since it's not serving any purpose. It's not a government property. It doesn't. It was, it was given to them by somebody. Without without uh, the people at the likes of Cletus building that police station. Do you think police will bring any police station in my place? Come on, man. So when they destroy, don't say they're destroying government property. It does not belong to the government. It belongs to individuals. These are people that just coughed out their money yet, and then built a police station and handed the key over to them. And they are not even serving any purpose. And the people occupying them now today are terrorists. And you're telling me that our non government and children do well, God will bless them. God will continue protecting them. There is nothing anybody can do to stop them. Let me open up the line for you to have your conversation this morning at 646 920 7984. That's the line for the WhatsApp. Then we have the. Um, Principal of Sense Line at 9294069953. You can also call me on Signal 8452839665. So, so far we have been talking about um, the insecurity in our place, and um, they're trying to make it look like our home is un insecure. They created that situation because they want us. So that is what they are trying to do. Is they want to have a reason to hang us. A reason to make sure that uh, we are we are we are crucified but you know something they will never never succeed they will always fail that is the truth it's the guaranteed truth i have a call let me take this one as the first caller this morning caller good morning tell us your name and where you're calling from 
was a very good morning to you, sir. Welcome my to the program. Dewo. Dewo. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Dewo, my brother. Dewo, my elder. Dewo, my father. Mazi, I'm just laying, um, laying a show you today. Because, um, some sort of things that, um, I need to put some record straight. First, I want to thank you so much this morning because you have done a very good job this afternoon by the whole enlightenment that you brought to to the people of Biafra and everyone in the world is listening to us. Everyone is listening to us now from Cairo to South Africa. They are listening to us. And we need to put this record straight. As yesterday you made a, a pronouncement of banding anyone that comes to the radio to divide our people more from what we are already. You yes. remember? Yes, I did. Okay. Yes. Mazi, I want to tell you something. I am a chief that I got from Mohanese. In this struggle, I've been there since 1999. I've been there. I was there from the start of Uwazuliki. You know why I brought this? There are chiefs, there are pastors, there are bishops. We have so many uh, that are in this struggle. Please, I am begging our people, whatever title that you have, we have one leader, Mazi Nandikari. I will beg everyone to respect that man for the sacrifice that he has sacrificed for the people of Africa. I beg all of you in the name of God of him. Pastor Chris White, Came to the radio yesterday. If not, uh, you know, we are going to adopt that in our leader. Say that DNA tests are going to be done. Some of the people, if I want to call them my brother, I have to hide my mouth sometimes. Our leader have put in this template on the floor. They have teach us who we are as people. Somebody asked you a question one day. He said, "Grant somebody to come and tell us the history of Biafra." You said that our leader have done even greater than anyone or anyone. That is even you, you like a father to our leader Mazen Nandekano. Yes. Very, very older than him. And so many other people. They cannot even tell the story that this man has come to tell. We knew who we are through this man. He becomes the mirror to all of us. Who is he? Where, who is these people? They are our people. You come to the radio to tell us about your people that your sister that was killed by a, an Ikwere person. What does it bring to the table when millions of people are listening to you to open the gutter, call your mouth to come and castigate our own brother? In my place where I come from, Mazi Chukodi, I don't want to call so many names. My neighbor, we hate them. When they talk, we say that people, they don't tell the truth. When they say they're telling you they are lying. But these are our brother and bro two big brothers that give birth to both of us. Should I deny them not being our brother? Come on. Ikwere is our brother. Ibibe is our brother. These are families. If, if you don't know what to say, do not let the referendum say what it is. Do you know the people on the ground? Is it because of, some of these people have a platform to come on radio and TVs to talk like Wike is talking and they've been giving money and you now want to say because of incident that happened between one person to one person, you want to deny the whole race who they are. No, we have voice of the coast. Somebody is there shouting. We are one people, and you come and say, "Go with which which ones, which state are you going with? Are you gonna leave your brothers alone?" Please, I will say this in Mas, uh, 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 later on on Mas's um, uh, uh, Mas's program because nobody should come on the air again and tell us who we are yeah. and tell us to go with this state or this particular thing. Because I love what our brother did. Our brother from Finland that is always fighting for the freedom of his people. Anayo. He came and lambasted that our brother that came to the radio to talk against his people. Nobody should come to our radio again and talk about who we are as people. We know who we are. The referendum is going to say who we are. That's right. Don't divide us anymore. Mazi, no. everything that you say this afternoon, I'm just going to say last thing. Regarding our people who goes to the TV and their body language is saying different things, Mazi, just give or, give them one month from now or three weeks from now. They are all going to be saying it the way it is. They are scared. They are worried. But you see that worry? They are coming around. They are coming around. They are coming around. They are coming around. 
they are coming gradually. And I have to take it. I have to take it. I have to take it. Soon, they will say the way it is. But on the day of judgment, we are going to remind them what they have said. Who, 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 elected, who elected us or the mother came and came? Go to the hospital and see the body of the youth that they are going to lie around his house so that he can tell us why he bring military, why he bring police and army to come and kill the youth in no worry. Or it have become a war zone. Everyone is running away from, her, from his house because you want power. You see that power? You and your family and you and your APC people who has led you to do this to our people are going to go six feet. Oh, yes. Elohim, business that we are not going to forgive any of you that have killed our young people. Yeah, well, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Yeah, like uh, like I was trying to say, they, they keep on hiding in their, you know, their, their mouth is saying one thing, their body is saying something else. You're asking why is there, they ask you why do you think that uh, the governor of Imo State is having all these issues. Just go straight to the point. He was not elected. Oh, the person that is asking you is expecting you to give that answer, but you are not courageous enough. You know, in a quick we now buy around. The man was not elected, he was nominated by the Supreme Court and put in there to do what? To do nothing. All right, I have a call, a uh, straight line. Caller, good morning. Tell us your name and where you're calling from. Thank you, my brother. Hi, Peter. This is Mazin Dukokoro. Okay. Dukokoro, your regular caller from my location. Welcome. You know. Welcome to the program, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Your, for, for the clip you played, somebody that was interviewed who was talking about uh, Ozodema, the governor. Yes. And uh, he was calling him governor. And you came up to say Ozodema was not, he was not elected by the people. Yes. Yes. Ozodema was not elected. I hope Ozodema was uh, imposed, imposed, and imposed on us, or enforced. To be a governor under the barrel of the court yeah. and perfumed by the court, all right. He was imposed under the under the barrel of the court, and then he was it was perfumed Supreme Court under the leadership of that uh, Alekale. Uh, the, well, I don't know his name again, but the Alekale Chief Judge. So that is how it is for that. Sometimes I used to work the purple. Some elected APC, some so-called elected APC governors, when they are holding a meeting. And you see Uzodema amongst them. Mm -hmm. I don't know how they feel like. I don't know. I, the, the other, the, the picture I saw, even with Ken and Amane, they're having a meeting with Uzodema and the Ugu Uguanya and so on. Those who claim to be elected. And then Uzodema will come and sit with them. And I don't, I, these people really don't have shame. They have no how shame. How can Uzodema come? They yeah. tell you, somebody who was imposed on people, under the barrier of the gun, because if you uh, people at the Imo State can recollect, the very day that Supreme Court made that pronouncement, there were plenty of mobile policemen at Owere. I was at Owere that day. Yes. You would think they, they have declared state of emergency. That was why people calmed down, because no person wants to lose his life because of those of them. But today, everything has life. But our leader promised that he will, he was, he is not going to sit there. Of and course. it's happening. Yeah. I, have you seen that last week or two? His deputy, I think, suddenly realized himself and resigned. So that shows him that uh, he himself, I don't think, he will not even resign, he will run away. <laughs> he, he will disappear. I know. That is how it will be. So let us stop another person call. Dukokoro from the my location. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Very well. Thank you very much. This is Radio Biafra. We're still talking here. And uh, the, the number is 646 Nine two nine four zero six nine nine five three. That principal officer's line and the ladies. Uh, we are also on Sky. Um, well, no, no, no. I'm not on Sky this morning. I am on um, Signal. Call us on Signal at eight four five two eight three nine six six five. No matter what they do, when like I said before, if you don't, if you don't know what to say, if you don't have the courage, don't go to national television to embarrass yourself. If you are talking like a coward, we all know. We know the truth, and the truth is the only way you can. If you're not courageous enough to go there and speak, please don't. Caller on um, Principal Officer's line. Good morning. Tell us your name and where you're calling from. Caller on Principal. Okay, the land is hooked up. You have to call us back. You're calling on WhatsApp on that line. That's why. All right, I have a caller on straight line. Good morning. Tell us your name and where you're calling from. Hi, Peters. Good morning. 
Welcome to the program, sir. Morning. Uh, my name is Jack. I'm calling from USA. Um, I want to thank you. First of all, uh, um, one of my sisters. Let me use the word sisters. I uh, you know. Um, the he's she's living in uh, New York with a husband. <laughs> They are the one Nigerian is, but I was surprised yesterday when I got a call. <laughs> I should, I should really thank um, Mazi Nandi Kalo and thank uh, Mazi Ipitas and uh, Mazi Alozie and Mazi Jonathan for the good work they are doing. Um, that she never knew that uh, what is happening that has been seen beforehand. Yes. That in fact that the only problem they are having that most of them who are coming late into the struggle or into the awareness of what is happening uh, many people are really um, ignorant of what is happening they are just, They're just moving. I know. and uh, one of our brothers that just spoke before the last caller now got it some my mind you see there was a time I made a request. It's not, yes, I you somebody might say something, but the presentation might not be the exact. They just extract the idea yes. of what the person is saying. I made mention of history. If uh, somebody, because you see, history that was crafted from Nigerian uh, school was intentional. Yes. Was was in fact because if you keep on telling, even if yes, you know who your father is, but any day you are with your father, he keeps telling you about your line. Every day, you cannot get enough of it. Every day you want to know. Yeah. And that is the best way. It's not that we have been told. Is it Mazina Nikalo, why God will continue to bless him and bless him and bless him is God prepared this man for the old and young. If Nigeria uh, all the tribes in Nigeria are listening to him. What is befalling any or, or everybody now? It wouldn't have been. Yeah. At least it would have been reduced. But now many people know that 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 man uh, is not an ordinary human being. So I'm still bent on what I'm doing, please. Sir. I'm saying, if you have a way, I know everybody will know our lineage. We know who we are. Yes. You see, the problem we are having, even even the coastal, uh, uh, our coastal brothers, many of them are deprived of this history, genuine history. I listened to uh, Mazep Young yesterday, and uh, the, the 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 brilliant um, that uh, brilliant section they had with our coastal brothers. Yes. You say that such section, if is available to the common people in the coastal region of Biafra land. Frankly speaking, what we are saying now will not be saying it that way. Yeah. Many of them are deprived of that. Anytime you have an opportunity to bring in somebody who will continue, whether it's something we know before or something we don't know, history has a lot to win the souls. People who are ignorant of this thing, once they come in, as I told you, people who will come tomorrow, many of them will be more <laughs> more crazier than we, we are now. Absolutely. So I just want to bring the greetings to you all who are doing the justice in the radio. You people are doing so wonderful, frankly speaking. I really appreciate it. But anytime, even if on voice record, even if one of those, uh, uh, I don't the traditional rulers in the coastal region, they say something, they, they would can record something. Even our uh, journalists can move to any of their palaces. Uh, Biafran television, there was a time they did it. Uh, if you can air it, and the man will just air the certain something about that coastal region to encourage their people look, we are the elders, we know who we are. These people came and divided us and all this. You broadcast it here. It will see it will go a long way. Yes. Because it will help our those are those are brothers that always say, hey, hey, well, let's forget about uh, this five region and all this. Please, we are one people. We can leave our brothers behind. Thank you very much, sir. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. All right. Thank you very, very much. This is Radio Biafra USA too. Like yesterday I said it on my program here. Uh, I don't I encourage people to say whatever they want to say, but you see that area of 
uh, go with the fire. No, I don't want it anymore on my program. It's no point. There is no point at all because it's also making any sense. You cannot castigate. You can't live your own. You wouldn't want to go Bible. The Bible already told you that. If you have 100 cows and one of them run, please leave the other 99. Go, go after the one. Don't let it go. It's not just cow he's talking about. He's telling you. Now one nigga, one nigga, no matter what. And don't forget that before the anyway, some of you are young, and uh, let me use that word, and they, you have not been taught any history. So most of the things you are talking, you don't even know what it is. For me, there was no difference between uh, Okreka man and uh, and uh, somebody from Okigwe. They were the same thing. It was after the war that they started splitting and splitting and splitting, and then they divide homes into two, and one side is one side, the other side is the other side. You know, let me take a call. Call on straight line. Good morning. Tell us your name and where you're calling from. Yes, Mahazi. Good morning from here. Welcome to the program. Yes, uh, Mahazi. Today's program is a wonderful program. Yeah. Uh, good morning, dear friends. Good afternoon. Good night. Uh, my name is Judo Kafo. Judo Kafo is from Agbo. Agbo is in Anioma. Anioma is in Biafra. And Anioma is 100% Igbo speaking people. Mazi, uh, one thing I have to say about this issue about go with five state or whatever this that, that people are saying online everywhere. In fact, those people that are writing it, they are not IPOB member. Exactly. And they are not they are not even Biafrans, I can say. Because if you are IPOB member, you have you know the manifesto of IPOB. IPOB means the indigenous people of Biafra. Our main objective in IPOB is to gather Biafrans all over the world together, including the Biafrans in Biafra land. We are, our aim objective is to gather our people, wherever they are, wherever they have been divided to, put in, in that confusion. That is the main aim of IPOB. And that's why Chukwa Biyama sent Mahazin and the Kano to come and do, to come and gather his children in the Zoological Republic of Nigeria. So that at the end, all of us together, we enter the promised land that Chukwa Biyama has, pre has uh, prepared for us. But I see some people writing, go with five states, don't go. Those people, they are not Biafrans. I will categorically tell you that 100% of those people, they are not Biafrans, they are either Yoruba or Bini people that are writing those things. And they are, open, they are opening the fake account and answering Chinedu and Okafo and putting something online. So you are there jumping up and down. Let's go with five states. The people that are writing that thing is a fake account. We are all tuning to it now and putting comment. Uh, go with five states. Leave this one. Don't leave that one. It's a fake account. Nobody should be deceived with those things they are writing on face or social media. If you're an IPOB, you are a Biafran, you know your people, you know your family, you know your brothers and sisters. And together, we are all one people. First of all, Biafrans, I'm just going to give a brief history about the Ka people and the Anioma. Because our history has been dotted and right written by a foreigner just like one man all the way from england came and discovered river ninja he wrote a book that he discovered river ninja but there were people living by the river band and what was that name today they say he can be born and your from benin bull lies go and read the car history we are old people and that is why you have a land in the car land that is called Igbwakeri. Today, it's called Igbanke. Do you know the man called Idu? It's an Ika man. Idu is not a Bini name. We will write our history. The name Idu is not a Bini name. Idu is an Ika man that went across a river called Otobaye in Igbogli. There's a place called Igbogli in Abavo. The man that found Ababo, his name is called Awu. And Awu is the father of Idu. Awu is related to a village called Igbogili. He went across the Igbogili River to find Otobaye, Urome, and Uba. 
And that is why for 500 years, the Benin Empire fought with the Cap warriors to claim our land. Ika land was a big first land. 500 years, the Ika people fought with the Benin Empire. After the Benin Empire have conquered Urubu land, the Jol land, and other small, small ethnic group, and made them their slave. But Ika people refused to be a slave to the Benin Empire. And today, somebody is writing and saying the Ika is from Benin. It's a lie. We are Igbo people. And that is why the Amnyoma as a whole for 87 percent of the Igbo dynasty go and read go and read the history of the Ika people aka for Ori and Kwa came from Ijol, uh, from Ika land the first king of Ika land has four children four boys they were dumb and dumb in fact they left Ika land to sojourn and they never came back they left with a basket on their head and today their name has been mortalized in the Igbo dynasty. Let people go and read histories. The Anyoma people, they are not from Benin. The Ika people, they are not from Benin. We are Igbo. And that is why we answer the name that we answer. We were never a conquered people. We are free people in the Kalan, in Anyoma as a whole. We are Igbo. You cannot go with five states without taking Igbo and Anyoma people. Even during the war, all the generals that fought with our late general, they are from Anyoma land. If they don't believe they are Igbo, if they don't believe that they are from Benin, they will not support our late general to fight the war. They know who they are, and that's why they fought with our late general to make sure Biafra come to reality. We are not going to let nobody write our history. And that is why in the history we hear he do an Oba war. And ask yourself, why is he do fighting Oba? Why would there war between he do and Oba? Because he do is not a Bini man. The Oba wanted to con to conquer he do's territory. He do is an Ika man. There's no Bini man called he do. Just like a village I told you called Ababo. The man that found that village is from Ingri. His name is Awu. Ika people are Igbo people. And that is why they have a land in Ika land that called Igbo Akiri, which is a banker today. And Nyoma people are 100% Igbo. We contributed 75 to their called Igbo dynasty. The Igbo Western, the Western Igbo. We are all in this struggle. We are all in this struggle to liberate ourselves from the shackles of the Dominican Republic of the Sioux called Nigeria. Let no man be deceived. Let no woman be deceived. Let no Biafran children be, be, be deceived by what they are seeing on social media or what they are reading. And people say there's no history in the zoo. Do you know why they put on history? Because the history is lies. They know that in the future we will know we will find out the history. That's why they took it off from our from our curriculum in the school. Because all what is written there is lies upon lies. Midwest state, Bender State, Edo and Delta. I don't care whatever state they are creating. We are Igbo people. We are Biafrans. We are IPOB. And with the help of Chuko Kika Abiyama, Biafra must come. Mm -hmm. And we together must get to the promised land. Thank you, sir. Chuko Abiyama, bless you, Mazi. Bless you, Carry too. On. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Thank you very much. This is... <laughs> Why? Oh, we want to the radio station with more. You're listening to the radio station. You're listening. You're listening. You're listening. This is Radio Piafra. Radio Piafra. All right, I have a call coming in on Signal. Let me take this one. Uh, call on Signal. Tell us your name and where you're calling from. Call on Signal. Are you still there? All right, uh, looks like. Uh, all right, call on signal. Good morning. Tell us your name and where you're calling from. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mazri Akira. 
Pastor Jack on the line. Good afternoon, fellow dear friends and lovers of freedom. I just want to lend my voice this morning or this afternoon per se. First of all, I want to appreciate you, Dr. I. Peter, for sending that warning that whosoever that is coming on this platform with that uh, argument of going with five five states should be shut down. We are no longer going to tolerate that anymore. Is your, is, is Of all beings, what are you? What are you? Yes, to withstand this struggle, you can just you may just do well to refrain from commenting on this particular issue. The enemy cannot push us and tell us where to fall, That's right. it is not possible. If somebody that is in Nigeria is telling you that he has a brother in Niger and some of the other neighboring country, and he'll be the train, train station or train railway and other things because of his cousins in that place, how much more our own brothers here? Uh, somebody is telling me I should come and go with with part of a uh, part of part of the state and leave our brothers. It's, it's not it's not going to be it's not going to be entertained or welcome again on any other platform. So those of them online, they can be happy. They are happy for themselves. We know ourselves, and nobody have that power authority to speak for Biafra. Only referendum will speak for every individual. So having said that, I want to go st straight to the the so called whether intelligentsia or the so-called leaders, political leaders and traditional rulers. Now, we are coming to you because uh, you people, this group of people have been one of the major setbacks we are having in this in this quest for Biafra restoration. And we have come to the point where we will no longer tolerate anybody. You see, this is a freedom fighting. We have not, we are, we have not yet enthroned democracy because we have not proper we have not yet restored our country when we restore our country we sit and decide already we have we have documents that has the government will be conception go and search for this document you read it down you actually see that this system of government he actually gives every set of people, whether ethnic or whatsoever, he gives them the right to decide for themselves what they want, not the central government deciding for them. So at that, at that level, you'll be able to bring any dev dev developmental project or whatsoever you want inside Biafra Nation. It's inclusiveness. We are not one idiot. We'll be at the top deciding what will happen somewhere. We are the rule of law will be obeyed. And in turn, to every Nick and every every Nick and Harry, not for some set of people, no, nothing like that. Now, some of these political leaders, because they have seen themselves in one position or the other, they are thinking they are decision makers for everybody. But there's one thing they have refused to under understand: they only speak for themselves. Because first of all, if you go to your village or your community, for instance, where I come from, if the community or the village want to make a decision on important things. They will just call the tank layer to summon everybody. Everybody will gather. And the answer will say that is, 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 is leading at that moment. We'll come and say, we have this issue. What do we do? What do you think? It don't take decision on our behalf without consulting the people. It doesn't happen. So after deliberation, people will say their mind. So the leaders that are representing, we now know what you are, the people are thinking. And from your collective suggestion, they will now harmonize it and pursue that thing that the people have said is what they want. Not office holder or a traditional ruler. You go and make a certain decision and say it is bad. Now coming to uh, also Dimba, everybody knows that also Dimba is never a governor, never won a seat. The INEC register is there. The number of voters become more than the INEC register, which you know is a fraud on his own. And they still went to the Supreme Court. We are the presiding judge, the representative owner, who said his certificate was eaten by a tamad. Threw away the register. Doesn't care whatsoever evidence they have, whatsoever evidence they have. Because Fulani decided that they are going to change Imo State and place somebody who will give them access to conquer Imo State. They brought us Odimba. And because he was hungry for power, he thought he can do anything. When he, when he came inside, like one of our brothers said, they use 
army and police and cover everywhere as if we were in a war. And after that, not for him to even seek the face of his people to work with them. He continued to take instruction from Abuja. You remember that also Dimba have bombed Olu two times. He's the only sitting governor that have bombed their state. Also Dimba continued to kill the youth until finally he killed Ikoso and some other people who did not do anything to him because he thought he has acquired power. Now the people have to remind you that you are a human being. You bleed. And nobody put you in that position. In the, the people did not put you there in the first place. And since you want, since you want problem, that problem, the people will give you the problem. Because he that goes to equity must go with clean hands. Now having said that, no matter his plea now, hope Osodima can, Osodima can never have peace in Imo State. If you like, you go anywhere like. You can never have peace. Or you can never settle the security issue unless you run away. Because in the first place, we are not elected. And we will never allow you to have peace. Because since you have brought war to our land, you will see war. And anything that is raging by also Dimba, he brought everybody today. They are killing our people. They are burning our they are burning houses, they are killing our youth. They will offload, they will just stop a bus, offload everybody and pack them to who know where, and they are slaughtering our people. Now, these political office holders, we want to tell you one thing. We know you are entitled to your personal opinion, but you see, when it comes to this Biafra restoration, this pursuit, you don't have, you only have your opinion. But the end of you going to television or the community in Abuja, you go there and play for one Nigeria, we have come and gone. That area will no longer exist. If you do, we will deal with you. It is not a threat, it's the truth. Because you are setting us back. You don't speak for all of us. It is the referendum that will speak for us. So when you go there, you are political officer that was ever, you say we must remain here. Or you say you are or whatsoever. My dear, we will come after you. Because we no longer take that rubbish anymore. When we have our, when we have our Biafra restore, inside Biafra, you can say whatever thing you want. When we set up our government, our government will run according to the wish of the people, not the dictates of one individual. So let us let us be mindful because anything you do at this juncture will come after you. Have you wondered all the wife like people have been looking for a way to conquer everywhere? And they say the only greatest strength they have is the understanding or is the unity between the people they call South South and the one they call South East. Because initially they have been issue, they knew that is that was why they have to divide us in order to make sure they penetrate. But when they are seeing that people are understanding, they have to fear for what is about to happen. Therefore, we will continue until every part of Biafra will be complete and they will give us Biafra. If they like, they should threat, threaten up and down. All of us will either die or we get this Biafra. Thank you. Dr. Akita, thank you very much. There will. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, what I'll do right now is I'm going to take a very short break and I'll be ready. All right. I have a call coming in on um, Principal Officer's line. Good morning. Tell us your name and where you're calling from. Yes, Mother Akita. Good evening from Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia here. Welcome to the program. Thank you, sir. This is uh, Anzu Chichi. Um, Maze, I uh, thank you for the job you are doing for BFRs. This is always my special thanks to our Supreme Leader, Maze Namdekano. And um, I'm happy this afternoon to hear from our brother, uh, Pastor Jack. I know that you are recuperating very, very well. Uh, we understand the situation and that you will have him now continue to be with you and I uh, hear you. Also, the genuine IPOP fighting to make sure that um, we are being removed <coughs> from the dot, which we know from the day one will never be a dot. Um, as do you see that um, the narrative is um, fast changing? Like um, the second to the last caller, um <clears throat> judo castle that he just put it the way it should be i also have come random sampling of what i'm observing happening online mother it is obvious about um 90 or 80 percent of people talking about the uh, five states or let's go even we should go with five states speaking biafra from hinterland you know, the so-called South East, South East, mainly they are not um, from IPOP. And uh, I have observed that even before our brother reiterated that. It's not um, most people you see talking about 
Yeah, let's go because a lot of things happening. You see some people writing some things they do not even understand the direction where the struggle have reached and where we are heading to. Uh, there's nothing like a five um, five states. Biafra is not. Uh, we are known by provisions, and even before the coming of a white man, if you go to the map of uh, 1903. And then you can see everything there. And we are going out there. We are going back to the old map. You know, the Bight of Biafra. And we know where the Bight of Biafra started. And we know where our map started. So anybody trying to come online to tell us we should do this, we should do that. They are not, they are not, let me just say, they are not even IPOP who are the real main pioneer of this uh, struggle with the whole world you know today. So I will just say that our spring leader Mazen Namdekano with the work of IPOP, the job is done. You understand? And um and the other thing we should also be rejoicing, some of us that know the direction where this struggle is going to because very, very soon we are marching towards that final freedom. And you can see it the freedom is beckoning, the freedom bell is ringing everywhere and there. Uh, I could remember vividly, few years or few months, if not years, few months ago, they keep on making or housing all their meetings, they keep on giving all their utterances, saying that um, Nigeria is indivisible. Uh, but uh, now, from what is happening now, they are no longer singing a song of indivisibility of the back contraption. Now, they know that Nigeria is negotiable. Whether they like it or not, they must come to a round table. Even if they fight a war, even if they try to do anything they want to do, dialogue must come to a round table. And once that dialogue comes, they know, full and know what they are afraid of. And it's not only the Afghans that are going to disintegrate from that contraption. You can see the nation's mind coming from our brethren from Uduruan nation. The zoo have lost it. The zoo would not have any state they will hold on to as people that will answer a Nigerian. Once this referendum is coming, it's obvious, you see, it's knocking on the door. Once this referendum comes, everybody will decide where they belong. As in they will. And God bless you, sir. Thank you so Thank much. You, All right. This is Radio Biafra USA 2. We're still taking calls here. 646-920-4541. 7984 plus 1 Call us. The lines are still open for you. I still have a room to take a few more calls before we call it a day. All right. I have a call coming in on WhatsApp. Call her on WhatsApp. Good morning. Tell us your name and where you're calling from. Oh, wow. Unfortunately, the line just dropped on its own. I didn't touch it. I didn't do anything to it. So stay tuned. We are here. Call us. All right, I have a call coming in now. now. Let's see. I have a call on signal. Tell us your name and where you're calling from. Good morning from here. Mazi, hi, Peter. Good morning. Welcome to the program. Society, it's a young person. It's a young person. It's true. On God day. I know. I was here. It's a long watching. Yesterday, sorry, I'm not going to daddy. I'm not going to I'm calling from my location. You know, yesterday, yesterday when he, when you were, the people were making a section, I mean, uh, suggestion and their contribution I was boiling in my mind. I tried to reach you out, I couldn't. I said maybe that is one of those things. Yeah. One day, any day you call, you get, that's your lucky day. Yeah. So glory be to God and my regard to all IPOB members all over the world. I'm the servant of the most high. You know, that's one thing most people didn't understand about we IPOB, the most people of Africa. And our leader, whom God sent, he came to restore 
or save the lost sheep lost sheep lost sheep of Biafra, which comprise both south south and south east south house and we the lost sheep so anybody telling you about uh, five states of these things that person is, uh, is in fact he has uh, something in his brain maybe he's not to lose a bit that need to be fixed how can people from Mauritania, Chad, Niger, gather together and call themselves for Fulani, and then giving you order, the owner of the land, and telling you who is your brother, who is not your brother, how many people are, where to go and where not to go, in your own father's land. And you are, you are although so our brothers, most of our brothers have said that people that are, are making that exception are not IPOB members. So we shouldn't brought that issue on the table. Because we know who we are, and we are going with the whole of our brothers and sisters. Our leader have always mentioned these things in, in his past broadcast that they divided us after the war. Yeah, they divided after after the war just to just to just to despise their friends. They just to put confusion in our brothers and sisters. They are, that is when they divided us. It's after the war they divided us. So people keep calling some 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 this that will go with which five states are we five states? If you see the old map of Biafra where it started, when we started, oh my goodness. In fact, eh, I don't know how to thank our leader, Mazen Nanka, because he brought wisdom, understanding, opened our mind, and the zoo have destroyed us completely. If not this, not this, this prophet, this prophet of God, the zoo have destroyed us completely. I mean, Toto, they have destroyed us. When I was in the zoo, I told you, I told you people in this platform long time, last time that I was even flog beating for not accepting that the mongo park discovery is another this is the fallacy lies they, they teach us in school then whereas he well, but when i left the zoo and i discovered that it was rivanaja that discovered the idiot called mongo park but all these things they thought on lies that would they fed us in school would become even more zombies Hoping that we are going to school, not that they are they are destroying our brain with lies and fallacies, hiding the, the secret, destroying our mentality, our brain. Look at how most of our people are behaving there in this. To tell you that the, the place is cause, it was not built for human development, just for destroy souls. So I thank God for for for, for this time that, that that Elohim have mercy and remember His promises. He made for our first fathers and sent his servant to come and redeem us. So nobody should come mention anything five five states. We are not five states. We know who we are. And we are going with our brothers and sisters because that's in Igwe Bike. That is why the full are, are, are making proud now. These people have for how long will they, be, will they be deceiving us? Is it not yet time that most of our people open their mind and be prepared to see the tricks of the enemy? To see the device of the willful ones. So enough of that trash that people are saying. And lastly, I want to say, hi, Peter. You know, the, yesterday what uh, Pastor Jack says, I really, I, I, I'm in support of what Pastor Jack said that yesterday regarding to all these fully full, so this uh, full and governors. You know, I thought the, the, this is our last um, lockdown seat, seat at home that we did on 31st, 30 to 31st, could open the eyes of the, all these morons they call governors in, in, in the Southeast. At least for them to start counting their use their tongue to count their teeth. Not knowing that they will still be gathering again in in in, in, in is it in Nenugu or what? Talking trash again, rubbish against us. So my own uh, suggestion time I've reached because I've given these people enough time. And they don't they don't want to repent. It means that they they, they, they are course completed. They want they, they are in, so in fact they are choosing to be destroyed. So okay, rolling bag lebranda, money bag do we bag do one day. Because Allah has too much. Thank you. Since they don't want to reason. So time is rolling. Kele Branda, and idiot, they are idiotic. They are doing too much. Their stupidity is is mind boggling. Thank it's you. It's enough sir. of them. They will. We don't drink it, Daddy. And long, long live our leader, Mazen Nanikom. Shalom, watching again. Shalom. They will. All right. This is Radio Biafra. We're still taking calls at six four six nine two zero four five four one. I have time to take about one or two calls before I call it a day. So call me and when you call, please be very, very generous. Make sure that you stay very low so all that can come in. This is Radio Biafra, USA 2.
<laughs> All right, I have a call coming in on straight line. Caller, good morning. Tell us your name and where you're calling from. Mark, uh, good afternoon from here, brother. We're still calling from my location. Welcome to the program. Thank you very much, my big brother. Mark, I appreciate you. I appreciate our leader. And I appreciate every your thanks that you're working at just me. Mark, do you see that clip you play about that interview? What? Okay, what's what's up with that line? Let's see. Your line went off, but you're still on air anyway. I don't know what is happening over there. All right, the call ended itself. Let me take another call on the um, principal officer's line. Caller, good morning. Tell us your name and where you're calling from. Caller on principal officer's line, are you there? The line is. Am I coming out, Mas? Hear me? Yes, I can hear you, sir. Go ahead. Tell us your name and where you're calling from. Okay. So, can I go on now, sir? Your line is open. You are talking to the world. Go ahead, sir. Thank you very much, Mas. I Peter. Good afternoon. My name is Desmond, and I'm calling you from Italy, Mas. Amazi, quickly, let me um, let me first of all um, give out our numbers here in Italy for the support of ESN. You know, um, dear France, as we all know, that where we are now is to secure our land. So for dear France in Italy, please and please, we do urge you to call these numbers. These numbers are from the IPOB national body, signed by the IPOB national coordinator in Italy, and um, is for support of ESN. And the numbers are plus three nine three five one zero zero four six zero five five. I repeat plus three nine three five one zero zero four six zero five five. This number is for the IPUB national coordinator in Italy, and the second number is plus three nine three five one two five five one two seven four. I repeat plus three nine three five one. Two five five one two seven four. This number is for the IPUB National PRU in Italy. Please, any of the number you call, um, you'll be directed on how to support ESN. It's very very important at this stage of our struggle now. Then, Mazi, your analysis is up now. I want to appreciate you for the good work you're doing, Mazi. Akitas is not easy. Then I want to just point out something I noticed. You know, Mazi, Biafras are wonderful people. You understand? Yes, good. We are friends, are wonderful people. Why did I say that? You see, our people don't really care the rubbish some people are writing on Facebook about five states. Why most of our people are calling and pinpointing about that particular topic or subject, should I call it like that, is because of Kelechi that said yesterday that he, he's talking his mind. That is why our people are very angry. Our people are not really angry about people writing nonsense on Facebook or what the rubbish government is saying. They are not. They don't care. It's because of Kelechi because they know that Kelechi is one of us. You know, he are, he is one of us, and and I think he's a very familiar because he has been calling and making contributions. That's why our people. That's why I say Biafrans are really wonderful people. You see, there is no how I keep saying it that we can leave any part or any inch of Biafra land to anybody. It's not something we can contest. A referendum, we decide. Uh, but if they don't want to bring up referendum, then we'll take our territorial control. That is all. That is it. I mean, uh, that, uh, anyway, they know. So let me not dwell on that. But I just want to say, Biafras are wonderful. And I want to prepare something about security in our land. I want our people to observe that this annihilation, this genocide is not only going on, gone. It's not only going on the way the military are shooting our people, clean our youths, um, in our land they should understand there are some form of accidents that has been happening in our land um that are involved with all these trailers some dangote trailers and some of all these trailers that are going on in our land i think these accidents are intentional because when you look at the accidents can one happen you know i think it's about three just within a, an, an interval of two weeks we had about three of it like that and many people died. If you calculate people that have died in that area, then they are, they are almost more than fifty. You know, and if you if you if you look, the drivers of those trailers, it, there is no account about them. 
whether they escape or they die, we don't always know. So people that are driving commercial buses along the whole ways of Biafra, because we don't have good roads in our place. So people, because and why is this accident happening at this time? You know, so people that are driving commercial buses, when you see these trailers coming from far, please and please be careful and don't go close to them very, very well. It's very, very important. Our uh, people must understand that these people driving these trailers are ginger weed and they are intentionally using those trailers to cause accident to kill our people. That is what I observe. And I have been wanting to say this, you know, since that last week, but I have not been able to call any of the platforms, you know. But now I'm happy that I'm saying it. So people driving bus across the whole of the Afghan and, and even people using private car, when you see all these their trailers coming from afar, please and please try to dodge them. Try not to close to them. Try to give them a lot of distance. Because these people, they intentionally cause accidents. They intentionally cause accidents to kill our people. That is what that is what I want to say this afternoon, Mazi. And God bless you for your good work. Thank you. Continue. Sir. There is no talk about Biafra is the destination. Thank Thank you very much, Mazi. All right. Thank you so much. This is Radio Biafra. Let's see what time we have now. We have uh, we don't have enough time to take any more calls at this time. So I have to shut down all the phone lines and uh, wait for another day tomorrow to be together again. All right. So we have uh, actually done, a, done with our conversation today. Unfortunately, somebody's still calling, but I can't. Sorry. I can't take any more calls. Uh, can pass any, any information that you actually... If it's something very important that you require, just uh, tune in to Mazi Alozie. Alozie will be able to answer most of your questions that I know, I'm <laughs> guaranteed. So this is Radio Biafra. What we're saying to you is keep doing what you're doing because without IPOB, I, I don't know what we could have done. Without Mazi Namdekano coming up at the time that he came up. You know, there are people out there who are saying, oh, you know, <clears throat> somebody even yesterday in Nigeria was like, uh, the person ran away to London. He's not in Nigeria at this time. And these are the one Nigerianists. Uh, you know, they, they, they obeyed the order about they sit at home because uh, people were threatened. They are like, hey, why are you fooling yourself? Why are you lying to yourself? The truth is that whether you accept it or you don't accept it does not really matter to us. I'm only saying don't castigate anybody who does not want to adhere to what we're doing because eventually they have no choice. One of our brothers who called from uh, Washington this morning was telling me about uh, the one Nigerian who said uh, that now he started listening to radio. Most of them don't even listen to the radio. That is the point. But I bet you any day they, they decide and they sit down and listen to the radio, you will discover that they, they, they make the best disciples, I'm telling you the truth. Because when they believe in things like that, not because somebody forced them into it, because they listen, they get convinced in their spirit, and they remain with us. I am going to call this an end today, but uh, don't forget, we still have to remind you, that Biafra, for us, is our religion. And Radio Biafra is where we worship. We take all the knowledge here, the knowledge here is something you cannot find in law books. You cannot find them in history books. But you have to listen to Radio Biafra to be part of what we're doing. From me to you, in I say goodbye for today. See you again tomorrow. God's willing. Lights our red.